Coming up on today's show, Tesla reveals its second quarter earnings, Ford shows a prototype electric F-150 pickup that can tow a train full of pickups, and the world's first commercial robotic valet parking system gets regulatory approval. These stories and more coming next. Welcome to our final News Roundup show of the month. I'm glad you're here. And as always, thanks to the Electric Auto Association for sponsoring this show. Find out how you can accelerate the electrification of transportation today at electricauto.org. We start today's show with Tesla's second quarter financials. Released midweek, they show the automaker reported larger than expected losses and a smaller than expected revenue. The total loss for the quarter was less than experienced in Q1, however, and Tesla managed to break its production and delivery records once again. Tesla's gross automotive margin, how much it makes on each car sold, fell in the second quarter, despite achieving nearly $5 billion in cash on hand at the end of the quarter. Mention of the Tesla Semi and Roadster were absent this time, but Tesla is pushing ahead full steam with Model Y. Tesla's financials may have caused Wall Street a little worry, but what actually caused stock to tumble further was the news that Tesla's CTO, J.B. Straubel, one of Tesla's OG team, will be leaving the company. Announced at the start of the earnings call, J.B. Straubel will be transitioning to a purely advisory role at Tesla. Considered to be one of Tesla's most important executives and influential in every Tesla vehicle since the original Roadster, JB was careful to note that he's still very fond of Tesla and the team there. We wish him all the best in his new endeavors. GM's autonomous vehicle arm Cruise had originally set 2019 at the year it would launch its commercial autonomous taxi fleet services. But as the year barrels towards its close, the company has now officially put back those plans. In a Medium blog post this week, Cruise's CEO said that while the essential building blocks of autonomous driving are in place, kind of the same thing that Tesla's been saying, right? Cruise needs to continue its testing and safety validations, as well as building charging infrastructure to support the network. Part of that, the US's largest EV fast charging station, although Cruise hasn't yet set a rollout date for the service or the charging station. Ford dropped an unexpected video midweek in which it showcased a prototype all-electric F-150 pickup truck towing one million pounds of rail cars. Demonstrated in front of a group of hardened Ford F-Series pickup owners, the pickup truck repeated the demonstration a second time after loading up the previously empty rail cars with 42 internal combustion engined F-150s. The video is certainly impressive, although it's not super hard to tow a rail car because of physics. I was impressed, but some of you have been dropping conspiracy theories alleging it was fake. I guess only time will tell. The US-based consumer watchdog, working alongside the Center for Auto Safety, has yet again called on the Federal Trade Commission and Department of Motor Vehicles in the US to instigate an investigation into Tesla's autopilot system. They collaborative claim that Tesla has engaged and misled with deceptive practices when discussing what its Tesla autopilot system can and can't do. At the heart of the dispute seems to be the name itself, which the group says confuses consumers. In some cases, it alleges Tesla makes, quote, their owners believe that a Tesla with autopilot is an autonomous vehicle capable of self-driving. To be clear, it is not, end quote. I am sure a rebuttal from Tesla will be forthcoming. Nissan has quietly launched a service campaign for all Nissan Leafs, both first and second generation, after it was discovered that bonding plates used to hold the battery pack into position in both generations of the car could corrode and fail. Nissan says that cars located where the roads are salted in winter are at the most risk of this happening, but it is conducting a voluntary service campaign to replace faulty bonding plates and bolts with new, improved parts. Note that this technically isn't a recall, but I think you should personally treat it as such. In an ongoing battle between the US EPA under President Trump and the state of California, with automakers 
Somewhere in between the two, California's Air Resource Board has reached an agreement with four automakers on pollution and mileage standards. Ford, BMW, Honda and Volkswagen have signed the deal as part of a compromise which will see them meet stricter emissions and fuel economy standards, well, at least more than the Trump administration wants to imply, but will delay the previous Obama-era standards, which California is going to adopt, by one year. It should ultimately help see more electric cars get made. Daimler, working alongside Tier 1 part supplier Bosch, has received official approval by local authorities to operate a fully autonomous Level 4 valet parking garage service. The service will be put into operation in the parking garage attached to the Mercedes-Benz Museum in Stuttgart. After driving to a drop-off point, equipped cars will then be able to drive themselves to a parking space without their owner, then return to meet their passengers and owner when paged by smartphone app. Both parties hope to roll out the feature to more locations in the future. And now it's time for those short shorts. Rivian reached a new milestone on its journey to bring the R1T electric pickup to market this week. In a Twitter post, the company showcased the first body panels to be pressed at its normal Illinois production facility. Initial panels will be used in pre-production validation vehicles. Tesla has submitted a slew of new patents relating to the production of its Model Y electric SUV. These patents include a new machine to produce almost all of the Model Y frame automatically in one go, as well as a new wiring system designed to be installed by robots. No humans required. Nissan has quietly rolled out a software update in North America to address the so-called rapid gate issue that resulted in slow rapid charging times on consecutive quick charging sessions with a 40 kWh Nissan LEAF. You will have to ask your dealership, though, if you want to have it applied to your car. Tesla has continued its Tesla Arcade software collection this week by rolling out a chess game. Like those classic chess games of old, you can play against another passenger or play against the computer. It's a perfect way to pass the time while charging. As it prepares to expand its production of plug-in vehicles, BMW has announced that its Spartanburg plant in South Carolina will be doubling its lithium-ion battery output. The majority of these batteries will be used in BMW's future plug-in hybrid models. The Boring Company has announced that it's just received its first outside investment. Totaling 120 million US dollars, the funds were raised by selling stock in the company. The sale was a private one, though, as the boring company isn't publicly listed. Just one week after it was revealed, Lotus says it wants its Evia electric hypercar to set a new electric vehicle record at the Nürburgring in Germany. The current EV record was set earlier this year by the Volkswagen ID.R at 6 minutes 5.336 seconds. As it prepares its iNex electric SUV for market, BMW revealed the car's new steering wheel this week. Its unique shape, the company says, is designed to make it easier for the driver to take over control from the car when exiting autonomous operation. Mini released a new short video this week featuring its recently revealed Mini Cooper SE. Called the Race Car Disclaimer, it shows BMW driver Jens Klingmann taking to the track in the plug-in hatchback and having a little too much fun at full pelt. The Polestar 2 is now officially touring the world with its US launch event happening this week in Seattle. Alongside the US launch tour, where you can see the Polestar 2 in various US cities this summer, similar events are happening elsewhere around the world. A video surfaced this week showing a Rivian R1T seemingly executing a perfect 180 degree on the spot turn just like a tank. While the video turned out to be CGI, it is worth noting that Rivian has trademarked the term tank steer, so something like that could be on the way. Tesla's quarterly earnings report and call taught us some new things this week. Among them, the fact that the number one reason people visit Tesla service centers isn't for service to their car or parts, but to learn how to use autopilot. I guess someone needs to make a tutorial video. Back when I was a child, electric milk floats were the way that most Brits got their daily pint of milk delivered. 
but they were slow and fell out of fashion in the last few decades. But now electric delivery vehicles are back, with one UK delivery service doubling down on its fleet of electric delivery vans. Except they're a lot faster than those old milk floats. Hyundai Mobis, Hyundai's in-house parts company, has announced that it's going to be building a brand new factory exclusively to produce parts for electric vehicles. The new facility will be used to make parts for both battery electric and hydrogen electric vehicles. Henrik Fisker has teased yet another picture this week of the all-electric SUV he says will enter into production for 2021. This time it's a front-on picture and if I'm honest, it does remind me a lot of the Hyundai Kona EV. Price is said to be below 40,000 US dollars. India's Tata Motors has made a step towards expanding its electric bus fleet this week, delivering 40 new electric buses to the Jammu and Kashmir State Road Transport Corporation. Interestingly, the batteries are located on the roof rather than on the floor of the vehicle to keep them away from flooding during the monsoon season. Tesla has quietly removed all free supercharging privileges on its certified pre-owned cars, regardless of how old they are. It's likely that Tesla's free supercharging policy will eventually go away for good, even on old used cars. But for now, you can still buy a used car with this perk if it's old enough. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. China is often criticised for not doing enough to accelerate the world's transition to cleaner, greener forms of energy and transportation. But this week, a new report from the UITP Global Public Transport Summit revealed that China's doing a whole lot when it comes to electric buses. Noting that one half of the world's bus fleet is still diesel powered, the report states that of the 18% of buses in the world that are now battery electric, 57% of those are in operation in China. Sure, there's a long way to go. Electric buses are still a pretty small percentage of the world's total bus fleet. But China is leading by example. And finally, it is everyone's nightmare. Driving along late at night in a neighbourhood you don't know when your car finally runs out of fuel. Thankfully, with modern EVs, that doesn't happen all that much. And when it does, usually what follows is a call to a friend to help you out or maybe to a tow company. But one Florida man, yes, Florida man, thought it was OK when his Model 3 ran out of charge to just simply park up and plug into a nearby power outlet. The homeowner in question awoke the next day to find a stranger's car plugged in and charging on his lawn. The homeowner was more good natured about it than most would be. But please don't just randomly plug in people. It's stealing and it's rude. Just don't. Plan ahead, OK? And on that note, it's the end of this week's show. Don't forget to like, comment and share. Bash that notification bell. And if you'd like to see us make more videos like this one and all the others we've made this week, why not support us by sending a couple of bucks a month through Patreon, buy us a coffee with Kofi, or visit our swag store and grab some of our merch. And of course, thanks always to the Electric Auto Association for sponsoring today's News Roundup. Advocating and educating the world about electric vehicles since 19. 67, the Electric Auto Association believes that the future depends on going electric today, which is what we believe too. Find out how to become an EV educator for yourself, discover a local monthly meetup, or just talk to real world EV owners about what it's like to dry on electrons by going to electricauto.org. We are members of the EAA and we are really proud to support this fantastic non-profit. I'll be back soon with more shows, but until then, thanks for joining me. And don't forget to be better, kinder and smarter with one another. Keep evolving.